Thanks for joining us on this episode of Extreme Reloading. This is our fourth episode of Extreme Reloading for the 556 or 223. In previous episodes, we looked at the effect of sorting our brass. And what we learned there is that it pays dividends to sort by head stamp. You know, Norma brass here, Lake City there, Federal Champion brass there. But we really didn't see big dividends or big payback by sorting those by weight. Now remember, consistency of our brass is extremely important. In fact, consistency is the key to accuracy all across the board. But what we're seeing is that at least in the 556-223, the weight of the brass doesn't necessarily act as a good surrogate or correlate with case capacity, which is what we were hoping it would do. The idea being that heavier brass is going to have a smaller case capacity, smaller burning volume relative to lighter brass in that same uh, cartridge or same casing. In the previous episode, we looked at the effect of different primers on the consistency of muzzle velocities and how good it would perform on paper, group size. And what we learned there is that the Federal AR Match is really a very, very good primer for 556 and 223. And that kind of makes sense. I think that Federal optimized this primer for the AR platform, in other words, 556. In this episode, we're going to be accomplishing a few things. First of all, we're going to be working up our powder charge, working up our load in two tenths of a grain increments. And we're going to do this using four different bullets. Two of them are 40 grain bullets. That's the Nossler Varmageddon and the Barnes Varminator. The other two are 69 grain bullets. That's the Sierra Tipped Match King and the Barnes Match Burner. Now all of these are going to be loaded in Norma Brass. And the reason why I'm selecting Norma Brass is you may recall from a previous episode I noted that the Norma brass was a little bit heavier than all the other brass that I was weighing. And as I was charging those cases, putting powder in those cases, I noticed that the same powder charge, 25 grains, in a Norma case tended to look like it filled up the case more than the same 25 grain charge in, let's say, a Lake City case. So I think that that case capacity is a little bit smaller in Norma and when we're working up the powder charge I like to kind of play it safe and go without what I'll call the lowest common denominator. In other words, if I do not see any pressure problems while loading these Norma cases, then I shouldn't see any pressure problems loading other cases because those cases tend to be a little bit bigger uh, and the pressures are not going to uh, show up as rapidly as they probably will with this Norma brass. Now there's not that much deviation amongst all this different brass but I'm going to play it safe and I'm using this Norma brass based on my past experience. Now by the way if you're interested in learning some of the more basics of reloading a couple of years ago I produced a reloading essential series and you may be interested in taking a look at that to accompany the more advanced stuff that we're doing here. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to roll up my sleeves and get busy. All right, I just completed loading five rounds of the 40 grain bullets. And I've, I'm keeping these things very carefully segregated here. The first round, the first load is 25.2 grains. 25.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and finally a 26 grain. I'm not going to go any higher than that because it's definitely going to start compressing uh, the powder and I just don't like shooting compressed loads. Um, pretty much avoid them. I know other folks can load those things, but uh, you're, you're, you're going to get into the pressure problems if you compress and you keep compressing the load. Um, that's just the powder capacity of that case. So I've got five rounds loaded with the Nossler Varmageddon and five rounds loaded with Barnes Varminator, both 40 grain bullets. And now it's time to change 
this bullet seating die because I've got to now load 69 grain bullets, Barnes match burners and the Sierra match king. So before I do that, one of the things I always like to do is to create a dummy round. And what I've done is I've taken fully prepared brass with no primer and no powder in it and I simply run a bullet in it. And this becomes my dummy round so that I can return to this same bullet seating later on when I want to load 40 grain bullets once again. Now a lot of the bullet seating dies that I use are the Redding Competition bullet seating die and those are fantastic. You don't have to make a dummy round for those. You just note the index number on the dial that sits right up here. But this is not a Redding Competition bullet seating die. This is a Hornady um, uh, 223 Remington 556 bullet seating die, kind of your standard uh, die. And the, obviously then the way that you change the bullet seating depth with this adjustment knob right over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back this out a lot. Okay, so it doesn't make contact with the um, bullet and the case that, I, that I'm going to um, be working with here. And as luck would have it, I have recently purchased some Creedmoor ammo that is 223 uh, ammunition and it's already loaded with 69 grain Sierra tipped match kings. So this is going to become effectively my dummy round. Now this is a loaded round, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to set my bullet seating depth for the 69 grain bullets. And we want to make sure that this is backed out a lot so that we don't seat this thing further uh, into the case and kind of ruin that round. So I'm going to lift this. And I can tell by the feel of it that it did not make any contact with the bullet seater itself. And now I'm going to turn this down till I feel it make contact. There we go. I can feel it right there. I'm going to create my own dummy round. Again, a completely prepared case no primer, no powder. I'm going to see how this worked out. Now the quote recipe that we're using from Hodgden is calling for a 2.235 combined overall length. This is our new dummy round. Let's see what we're set at right now. At 2.237. Okay, the loading is all done, and here's what we have. For the two 40 grain bullets, I started my load at 25.2 grains and then worked up in two tenths of a grain increments to 26 grains. That's five rounds for each of those bullet selections. You know, five rounds for the Barnes, five rounds for the Nostler of Armageddon. Now the starting load for Varget for a 40 grain bullet is 25.0 grains. But I've been shooting that load for years, so I know that one is safe in all of my 5.56 rifles. So my workup now is starting at 25.2 grains uh, and then up from there. For the 69 grains, it's a little bit different story. I haven't fired those things before. And the starting load is 24.0 grains. So I definitely started at 24.0 grains. And when I loaded even the first bullet, doesn't matter if it was the Barnes match burner or the Sierra Match King, 
When I loaded that first set of bullets at 24.0 grains, I immediately heard that telltale crunching sound of the powder. That's telling me I'm starting to compress my load immediately. So I did not load a full five rounds in each of those bullets. Instead, I loaded three rounds. I did a 24.0, 24.2, and 24.4 grains. Now you might be thinking, it's, a, it's the same case, you're throwing even less powder, 24 grains to start with, and yet you're getting essentially compressed charges immediately. Now the reason for that is because these 69 grain bullets are really long. Just look at how far the bullet sits into the case itself. That bullet is occupying a lot of that otherwise powder capacity. So I'm not trying to create the fastest uh, load possible. What I'm trying to craft is very consistent ammo that's also very safe and reliable in any of my 5.56 rifles. It's the AR-15, the IWI Tavor, and the Ruger Mini-14. Now my next step is to head out to the range and use my chronograph to watch those velocities. Before I do that though, I'm waiting for a new brass catcher to come in. And I want to catch every piece of brass as it's ejected and check those primers to see if there's any signs of pressure uh, on those primers as I'm working up that load. Now that brass catcher is coming in from Midway USA, supposed to be here this week. Then we're gonna go ahead and head out to the range. Well, till next time, Thanks for watching this episode of Extreme Reloading.